Life. Life. Yeah. Due to some violent content, parental <laughs> discretion is advised. Oh, God almighty. Let's see if we can knock out 15 seconds, 15 minutes or so. Here we go. Welcome back, guys, on today's show. What is with the couch that I'm sitting on? And Tesla spots a ghost. And also, people will buy the weirdest things. And also, what I've learned about a moving sale here in the last two weeks or so. Hey, guys, how are you? How are things? How are things going? Welcome back. Are you doing okay? Are you doing all right is what I worry about the most there. Are you doing okay? Well, here I am, day 14. Yep, day 14 here in beautiful Claremont, Florida. I'm sitting here. Uh, we're doing my moving sale. For those of you who don't know, my, my mom passed away last month. My dad went into the hospital right after that, came out of the hospital. Now um, we're packing up the stuff, everything that we want, and we're going to bring up to Charlotte, North Carolina, and actually Marshville, which is a beautiful town just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, is where we normally broadcast. But right now I'm in Claremont, Florida, just outside of Orlando, Florida. And I'm sitting here and we've boxed up everything that we're going to take with us, you know, actually use when we get up to uh, Marshville. And uh, the stuff that I have left over, we've been doing a quote unquote moving sale. So this is day 14 and I'm bouncing back and forth here because I'm sitting on this couch and I'll get into the couch here later on the show. And I'm, my dad's running around doing errands and stuff. So I'm left in here in the house with the doors wide open and uh, we're still selling stuff here. So if I have to stop and someone comes in to, to buy some stuff, this is the last day of this moving sale. I'm so, I'm so over this sale. And I actually bought my dad some matching uh, t-shirts and stuff that, that kind of describe what we're going through here. And you, you can see that later on when we get back up to Marshall. So here we are. Day 14, uh, the sale is going well. I know you guys are all worried about something. My dad is so ready to get out of, of Orlando, out of Florida itself, and start his new life up in um, in Charlotte with us or in Marshville. And, and he should. You know, he's uh, this house brings a lot of memories. And, and, you know, they've been in this house for 20-something years. They've been married together 53 years. And so it, it's time to, you know, I don't want to say put the past behind you because, you know, you never forget your, your loved ones and stuff. But the house itself... There's just a lot of heartbreak and memory in this house. And it got to a point, you know, I'm like, dad, I need you to, um, he come up and say, I, what, what can I help you with? I'm like, well, I need you to go through all this paperwork or all this, this closet and stuff. And he would get into the closet or what it, whatever it was, the assignment that I gave him. And he'd break down, he'd break down in the middle of it because it was so much hard, hardship memory going through my mom's stuff. And um, this was early on when we, when we started packing up and stuff. So I have, I have to plan his assignments very, dad, do me a favor, take care of your room, you know, get, get your office space up and running, um, break it down what you don't need and what you do need. Uh, let's start with that. And I'll, I'll worry about mom's stuff. Um, so that's where we're at. It's hard. I mean, it's gotta be hard on him. I know it is. Uh, it's hard on me. Uh, one, going through all this stuff and, and two, uh, talking to people because uh, I've literally unpacked the whole entire house stuff. I haven't seen since I was six years old, uh, dishes and plates. I have a story behind everything that, that people touch here. I'm like, Oh, I remember that. And I, I tell them the story and they go, Oh my God, that's so interesting. And they'd buy it. And I would sell, I told my dad, I could sell ice to an Eskimo type deal. Um, but the house is almost completely empty. Um, we have some big furniture. We're going to bring up to Charlotte or to the Marshville area. So it'll be interesting. I've been saying Charlotte all week because no one knows, no one knows where Marshall's at. So just to make my uh, spiel simple, I just say Charlotte, and you can see me bobbing back and forth. And don't forget, for every podcast we do, we have a matching video as well, and you can see me. I'm sitting on this couch. You can't see the couch just yet. Uh, actually, let me switch screens so you can see the couch. So if you uh, go to YouTube, you can search Deacon Live Podcast or go to ProfitRadio.com. You can see. Let's see if I can pan this down so you can see the couch. Can you, can you see the couch? Am I in the way? It's an ugly couch. And I'll tell the story behind that here in just one sec. So, guys, we're going to do a little short and sweet podcast here because I got people walking in, walking out, and I, I don't want to um, neglect them. So, uh, we got a big show to get into. Uh, we're going to talk to is this, uh, we're going to talk to Dan. 
from Is This Going Somewhere as well. So stick around. Big show for it. So stick around. We got a big show for you. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Bruffer Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow us on all your social networks. And the way you do that is go over to Profit Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio. Click on social networks, social contacts, and you can see all the stuff that links us to you and you to us as well. And while you're there, you want some free stuff, we'll give you some free stuff. Uh, just fill out the little form there. Let us know where we're sending it to. We got some magnets, some stickers, all that stuff. I gave my dad all my buttons. Uh, I told you last podcast, I gave my dad all my buttons. So he's been handing them out to all the like the nurses and stuff, wherever he goes, here, this is my son's podcast. You know, he's so proud of me, I guess, you know, <laughs> well, he is. I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to say I don't blame him, but you know, he's proud of what I do. So he brags and stuff. Um, so he's been giving out buttons. So unfortunately he's got all my buttons. I'm going to have to order some new ones, but you can still get some magnets and some stickers and stuff. Just fill out the little form and form with your return, uh, <clears throat> with your return address and I'll mail them out to you. So here we are, uh, day 14 of, uh, moving my, my dad up to uh, Marshville, the beautiful town of Marshville, which we normally broadcast from. Right now, I'm sitting in sunny Florida, and it's going to be, I think at the temperature outside, it says 82 degrees right now, which is feels like 92 with the stupidity. I mean, the humidity. I'm looking around. With the humidity um, here in Florida. God, I do not, honestly, I thought about it, but I don't miss this humidity. Uh, one thing I did miss is now that um, you know I'm working here with my dad, and oh my, I need to get, you know, some beer or whatever, you know, to keep things going here. And I'm like, all right, down, I'm going to run up to the store. You want anything? No. What are you going for? I'm going to get beer. Go run up to the store. And it's easy. It's quick. I'm, I'm there and back, you know, within seven minutes. I'm there and back, there and back. And I was like, God, I missed this convenience. But then I get in, you know, I'm driving to the seven minutes it takes to get there. And I'm like, no turn signals, uh, not paying attention, uh, not, literally just like stop in the middle of a, a road to look at a street address, go move, get out of the way. Like the, not that it's big city stuff, but you know, out where we're at out on the French, there's absolutely nothing. I mean, there's no idiots for the most part <laughs> there. It's two lane road. Just go. I mean, there's no stopping. just go here dealing with everyone from all walks of life. It, I don't miss that. So I kind of go, you know, good with the bad. It's convenient to go run to the store. If you forget like a, a stick of butter or a gallon of milk or something like that. Uh, but the inconvenience, um, my tolerance has grown high. My patience has gone low um, as far as dealing with the drivers here. Now, we are uh, still in the middle of a sale. So if you hear me pop up, I'm, I'm looking around to make sure, checking the entrances. I'm literally looking into a mirror that's looking, that's reflecting the front door so I can see people walking in. And I got uh, the garage door over to my left hand side. I can see shadows on the wall if someone comes walking in. So I might have to bump up here or jump up here to, to help them when they come in. But people, we've probably had close to 400 and some odd people walk through these doors in the last uh, six days or so, just you know buying stuff. And it, you got to watch these people. And I'm, I was not really worried about people stealing something. If they were going to steal something, good, fine. Nothing of value. All the valuable stuff is put in one location or in a central location so you can see it. Um, but the stuff that's not really too valuable, you really don't care if it walks out, you know, you're going to give it away anyways, is on the outskirts of the garage sale or the house sale because they're physically walking in the house doing this. So in the process of them actually walking in the house doing stuff, we're living here too. You know, I've got pans on the, on the stove from leftover from breakfast. So there's like egg residue in there when you make scrambled eggs. My dad's coffee pot's over there, and every time he makes coffee, there are coffee grounds on the counter, so you can tell that it's not really for sale. I mean, we are using it. And my dad's got Mylanta or some kind of uh, laxative because of his pills that he takes. He gets kind of bogged up, so he drinks that, mixes it with grape juice. So he, you know, There's all these different things, and if you're not watching it, some of the people that come in, they, I saw some lady walking around with, with, with my thing of Tums in her hand. I'm like, what are you doing with those? And she's like, I'm, I'm buying them. It's a it, moving sale. Are these for sale? I said, it's a half empty thing of Tums. Do you want that? Yes, I want it. I'm like, no, put them back on the counter. Those are mine. Ah, I thought everything was for sale. No. And another lady looking at the coffee maker, literally, I mean, and, there's, and it's disgusting. <laughs> there's dried coffee all over the damn thing. And the lady pulls the craft out and she... Like she's inspecting it, like opens the top up, looks it down inside, puts the top back. I'm like, what are you doing? How much is the co I said, that is not for sale. I said, the coffee is still warm inside of that. Ow. You 
people watching them and just watching them walk around. And then you throw stuff out on the on the table. You got like a miscellaneous table. You try to keep everything together, all the housewares and decorative stuff in one section, all your books and electronics in another section, all your dishes and, and cookware and crockery wear in another section, and then like your big furniture in another section. You know, just kind of keep it all together so they know what they're getting into. And you put some stuff on the on the table, and you're like, no one's going to buy this. Who's going to buy this stupid thing? Oh, my God. You turn around. They have that thing that you said no one's going to buy in their hand. You're like, really? I've been looking for this. I'm like, okay. It's all yours there, dear. You can have it. Uh, how much is it? And you just look at them and go, man, a dollar? I'll take it. But And then the stuff you think is gold, this is, this is not going to last a day. It's still sitting here. You know, no one would want it. I mean, I've got, let's see, what, what, I'm looking around, as I'm looking around, I've got 22-inch computer monitors, flat screen now, mind you, flat screen computer monitor with everyone working at home and stuff, and I got, I think, $2 on them, still sitting here, still sitting here. <laughs> I even got tempted to plug another monitor into this laptop, this shitty laptop that I have now, um, just so I could have another screen to, to look at. So, I mean, the thing that you would think would move the quickest sits and the stuff that you think is just shit, it goes, it sells. So there you go. People will buy, you never know what people's tastes are. And I've learned a lot from a lot of different people here. And I'll dive into that when we come back. We're going to talk to IT Dan here in just one sec. Stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. I'll be right back.
The way you get something for free is go over to Proper Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio. Click on the free swag. Uh, fill out the little form there, and we'll send you some stuff out, some magnets and, and whatnot. And uh, we just need a return address. Just say thank you for listening to us and downloading us and, and doing all the stuff that links us to you and makes us good friends and stuff. Right now, we're going to go to the phones and find out what's going on with IT Dan. No, I don't like that. I'm going to start that one over. Because I can't edit. Oh, I can't edit it now. Sorry. I can do that. Never mind. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm doing a lot of things in different directions. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You want something for free? Well, we will send you out something for free. Go over to Profit Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio. Click on free swag. Fill out the little form there so we have a return address and we can mail some stuff out to you. Just a little thing to say thank you for listening to us. Now, we're going to find out what's going on with IT Dan with Is This Going Somewhere? with is this going somewhere good morning travis how are you dan are you there yes i'm here okay good <laughs> sorry i didn't have the i didn't have my headphones on i you answered the phone too quickly yes I all right dan anything else where i'll let you go uh, no, just have a, have a, um, hope you sell all your stuff here and come back home. All right, I'll hurry home and you can meet my dad for the yeah. first time. Yes, and say hi to your dad for me. Will do. All right, Dan, thank you. Take care. All right, bye. Bye. Stick around. we got more coming up and a weird light that happened again that popped on here in the house. Stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow us on all your social networks. And the way you do that is go to Proper Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio. And while you're there, uh, for every podcast we do, I have a matching video as well. You can see me stressed behind the, the camera here as uh, <laughs> the computer took a dump on me and I'm trying for the last half hour, which is in real time. You, you guys won't see it or hear it. Um, my laptop took a dump on me, so I like lost all the audio and I'm sitting here struggling, try, trying to get everything back together. And then by happenstance, I looked and, and hit play and the audio's there. I just can't see all the peaks. So the first couple segments of this uh, podcast is a little rough. Uh, it's not my, it's my normal pace, but not the normal pace that you have grown to love here on Deacon Live. Now we love you guys as well. And, uh, as you know, we're sitting here. We're having another, or we're having a movie sale for my dad. Uh, we're going to move him up to the Charlotte area or the Marshall area where we normally broadcast from. But during this time, you know, a lot of people have been coming in here and sharing their experiences as far as like, um, God, the people will tell you a lot of shit about stuff you really don't care about. <laughs> you know, every time someone come in, first question. So you moving? Yes. It's a moving sale. Second question. Where are you moving to? Tell them the spiel. Uh, third question. Uh, why are you moving or whatever or something like that? Are you taking all this or some other question? And then they got a story. Everyone's got a story. So as you know, you get to talking to them and you know, and my mother passed away and we still have a garage full of stuff. And my father passed away and we just gave all our stuff and you need to donate and you need to donate and give your stuff and this stuff and charity, this and salvation army, this and, and, uh, correlation for the homeless, this just donate your stuff. Okay. Got it. Fine. We know. And I'm, I'm 50 years old. <laughs> you know, I've been on this planet long enough to know, really? I can actually give this stuff away to people? And you're just sitting there, oh, you know, you know what? If you want me to give this away, you take this over there to them. Because I'm not. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I've got a lot of shit going on. I don't have time to box everything up real nice and neat with a bow on it and take it somewhere else for them to, to sell or do whatever. Oh, I know that's heartless. I know that's heartless. But no, a lot of times you're just on a, you're on a time schedule and our time schedule ends this Friday and we need to be done. We need to be packed up. We need to be out of this house. I don't have time for an extra day to load up another truck and take it somewhere. And then what, maybe I dump it, they dump it. I'm not doing that. You know, if they want this stuff bad enough, ready? Hear me out. Now, I know there's the AM vets or something like that. They actually send guys out and they'll pick the stuff up and throw it in the back of their truck. Uh, but they have a got group of guys that do that. Uh, do they do that with Salvation Army? I don't know. Probably they do. But I don't have time to sit here and wait for them on their schedule to come by and pick this up. They need to make it a little bit more convenient. Like, if I put everything out on the curb, will you come get it? <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. As the neighbors go by and all the, the Fred Sanfords in this world will drive up and down the street. And yes, they will take it for you and do something with it. But you learn and listen to everyone's, I don't want to say, I'm not a therapist. As you guys may, may tell by now, I'm not a therapist. I don't mind listening to your story. But if we've just met for the first time, I can understand normal chit chat. You know, where are you moving to? Oh, that's great. Beautiful country. Love it here. I don't need to know that you've lived in this area for 15 years, 17 years, and your mother passed away, and you've got a garage full of this, and you don't know what to do with it. But yet you're in my house buying my stuff. You're in my house buying the stuff that you're complaining about that's sitting in your garage at home. So, I mean, pick your priorities, get things straight. Some people, when you, when you say, all right, here we go. When you say that I still have stuff in my garage from my mom, my dad, whatever the case may be, aunt, uncle who passed away, and I still can't get rid of it, and you're in my moving sale, you know what I hear? I'm a hoarder. I am a hoarder. That's what I hear. You know, you would think my mom was a hoarder, but she wasn't that bad. She hoarded receipts. That's the only thing that she was uh, guilty of, hoarding receipts from 1997 all the way up until present time. Um, and I, where'd those go? Right in the garbage. You know, <laughs> shred them, garbage, gone, they're gone. Um, but yeah, I mean, so we're getting ready to pack this up, wrap up, put a nice little bow on this, wrap it up, nice little package, and we're going to hit the road here in the next couple days or so. Now, uh, I told you a story about uh, walking into my bedroom and the light was blinking on and off, on and off, and I... In the middle of the night, the light came on. I asked my dad if that's ever happened before, and he said, no, that's the, I've never heard of that before. And um, the other night, my dad comes out. He's working in his office. As he's standing behind my shoulder, he's eavesdropping. What do you want? <laughs> I'm getting ready to tell a story about you. You want to hear it? Is someone at the I got a mirror right here. See that mirror? It, so I can watch the door out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> I know my dad says that's kinky and then I can see the shadows if anyone walks into the garage over there see the someone walks in the garage I'll see a shadow on the wall all right I got his approval so anyways my dad was shredding papers and cleaning up his office and uh getting things done now throughout that whole house you got those all little uh mag lights little red lights and stuff not red lights but little mag lights you know, with a little clicker on the on the bottom of them, you don't want to click on all the house lights. So my dad's got like all these little flashlights all over the place. He's got a flashlight in his room. How long was that flashlight in your room? You've never touched it or anything. Tell me the story of what happened with that flashlight. So he said it just came on. So the story goes, he's had this flashlight in his office area. He says it's been sitting up there for two, three years or whatever. He just never really messed with it. Just stood up there. It was just there for an emergency. And he was in there cleaning his office. And I said, you know, dad, break down the computers. You know, you got 15 computers and monitors in here. It looks like freaking Best Buy. And so he's breaking everything down and wrapping up the cords and stuff. And uh, he was cleaning off the top of his, uh, his hutch. And he grabs the light. Well, I say he grabs the light. The light's facing down, lens down, right? So it's, he said, I've never really touched it. It's always been sitting there, never needed for it. It was always just there. So he goes to move the light. And, you know, you move a light, you grab it by the, the round thing, by the, the shaft, ladies, and the button's on, on top. Ow. And um, so he grabs the light, and he, as he picks it up, the light's already on. It's, it's been on. Now, my mom and my dad got a real nice urn for a box, rustic-looking box. She would have really loved it. Um, and her remains are in there, and my mom's uh, was sitting on the... Um, the entertainment center for a while watching us over in the living room but as more and more people came into the into the house I'm like dad you know take mom into another room so he did he took her into the office and put her up on the hutch well the light was next to that hut or next to the the urn that my dad has and he was uh he said he was cleaning up and nothing's really happened spooky in the house since that night where my light went on and off and he said yesterday that that light was on. It was on full blast. He's like, I have no idea. I didn't really touch it. It was just on. I said, well, that's that's mom for you. I said, you know, she's finding a way to, to connect with us. And I told my dad the story. I, I went into the kitchen late at night and clicked on the lights out there. They got like track lighting, halogen track lighting up there. And I went out there for something, grab a snack. And uh, as I walked into the kitchen, the lights started flickering. And then I walked out and they stopped. And then I walked into the kitchen again and they started flickering again. And I walked back out and I go, dad, has that ever happened before? I mean, I'm thinking I'm trying to connect again. And my dad goes, no, that happens all the time. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I thought I had another experience. I wanted it to be another experience, 
But I mean, it, it's weird. So that flashlight came on and my, my dad has no explanation. And I still have no explanation about the light that came on in my bedroom uh, just in the middle of the night. All right, guys, stick around. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, this lovely couch that I'm sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big story about this couch, and I'll dive into that here in just one sec. Stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. You, you can follow us on Twitch. We are streaming live also on Facebook, so make sure you like us on all those social platforms, and you can see for every podcast we do, we have a matching video, and you can see me stress around here where my computer took a crash on me, and I was like going, holy shit, and I'm dripping with sweat because the house is hot because the front door is open because we're having a moving sale, and there's people walking in the house, and... <laughs> It's just, I am so, oh man, I'm so over it. My dad's over it too. He's ready to go. He's ready to move. Uh, we are broadcasting right now, currently just outside of Orlando, Florida in a beautiful little town called Claremont, Florida. The rolling hills of Claremont, Florida. It used to be orange groves at one time. We had a bad, bad couple years, canker sores or uh, a whole bunch of uh, disease and stuff where the oranges chopped them all down, put homes. Why not? Let's put some, let's move some people out there. Out there on the rolling hills of Claremont, even though it's 45 minutes outside of Orlando. Someone will move out there. Yeah, and we did. My mom and dad did. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, packing them up, uh, loading up the stuff. I've got the pod full. Well, that's going to f- join us here. Probably show up at the house in about two weeks. We're going to load up the rest of this stuff into a uh, U-Haul truck, which should be fun. And we're going to, my dad's going to drive. My dad, 70, going to be 76 here in the next couple months. He's going to drive this big 20-foot Box U-Haul truck full of furniture all the way nine hours, 565 miles all the way up to Marshville, North Carolina. And then we're going to dump it and we're going to dump it. And we're playing this little game, this little game that I like to call cheat the system and cheating the system is so the U-Haul, you're allowed to rent it for four days. You have it for four days and then a total of like 644 miles, which is, you know, go ahead and round that up to 650 if you could, please. And uh, we're going to, ha- and we're have it for four days. So he's going to pick it up tomorrow. So that's Wednesday. I know I'm doing the show a day early because tomorrow's a busy day as I'm getting ready to explain. So he's going to pick it up on Monday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday morning. And we're going to start loading it. It's going to take a good two days to get everything out of the house that my dad wants into this U-Haul. And then we're going to hit the road on Friday. Friday, you're going to hit the road, drive nine hours all the way there. And then Saturday morning, Technically, we'd have to have it return to the place in Marshville, but the place in Marshville closes at noon. It didn't say what time we had to have it back, just had to have it back on the fourth day. So if they're closed at noon and closed Sunday, closed on Sunday as well, how will they know where when we bring it back? So I don't know, look at the draw. Maybe they got cameras. I don't know how they work this thing, but I'm calling it cheat the system. So we're going to See if we can skimmy out one more extra day so we can get the box truck unloaded between myself, my wife, and my dad. So that's how we're going to cheat the system. Now, let me show you, for those of you watching us on the the YouTube video, uh, hold on a second. I got to move the microphone and I got to pick up the camera. See this camera right here? See this couch that I'm sitting on? I know I got stuff all over it. Look at it. (laughs) It's a sleeper sofa. Yeah, I loathe this couch. And when I say... uh, I put the camera back right. Hopefully I put it back right. You can see the uh, flashing red light to let my dad know that I'm recording. (laughs) I know it gets kind of annoying. I'll put it over here. Uh, And you can see some of the furniture in the background. Like, look at this. Uh, I don't know how the, (laughs) I don't know how the people on the, the news do this with the screen, reverse screen. You're looking at yourself. Left is right. Up is down. That right there, that, that lamp, 10 bucks, that picture on the wall right there, 10 bucks. This uh, chest of drawers, solid wood, uh, 100 bucks. I mean, they, you know, it's expensive stuff. We're going to bring it up to North Carolina. You can see it over my shoulder there. Um, but this couch right here, let me tell you a little story about this couch. And I'll wrap up the show and let you guys get back to what you got to do. So this couch right here. So I bought my house, first house when I was 20 years old. Um, my room, you know, being a boy, teenage boy in, in Orlando, Florida, I was big into skateboarding and big into all the stuff that boys do, you know, in their high school, uh, music mostly. So your wall, your room is your sanctuary. It's your, you know, sanitarium type thing. And, um, so, uh, I decorated the walls. My mom had real nice wallpaper in there. And I was like, no, nope, boy stuff, boy stuff, boy stuff, <laughs> all of, you know, pinned and stapled and taped and glued and painted and did all this stuff on the walls and basically just made a teenage boy's room. And, you know, that was my expression for, for who I was. And that was my little area. So now 
I, I buy my house and, and I move out and well, I went to work after buying my house and I got home and my parents had already moved everything out of my house or out of my room into my house. You know, here it is. See you later. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Here's your clothes. Here's your stereo. See you later. I was like, all right, well, all right. That's kind of weird, but thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and I actually had friends that were spending the night and they were there when my mom, my mom and dad got there and helped them unload everything while I'm at work, you know, help them unload and, and set everything up nice for me, you know, instead of just throwing it on the floor. That's what they did. So my mom always wanted to have her own little sitting area, her own little work area, her own little sewing area. So what she ended up doing was she painted the whole room like a, like a light sage and mauve. Mauve was the color, mauve, like a brown, pink, red or something. It's, I don't know, mauve. You know what mauve is. And the one piece of furniture that she had in there was this couch. And this couch, uh, I, you know, I'm, I went back to visit my mom, you know, a couple weeks later after moving in and I got a, a little break. I could go stop by and see mom and dad. And I looked in my bedroom and my bedroom was not my bedroom anymore. It was, uh, com it looked like a girl's room. It looked like a, a little girl's room. And this couch was in there and this hideous couch uh, probably never been sat on before, never been used. Uh, it's a sleeper sofa, which means uh, you wake up in the morning, you wish you were dead. <laughs> you wish, no, uh, no. I guess this couch is it's pretty uh, comfortable. But the couch itself is a sleeper sofa. Nobody has those anymore, or do they? I don't know. I've never seen them like advertised. Come on down, buy yourself a sleeper sofa. So... Anyways, so every time I see this couch, I look at this couch, I just it just reminds me of the actual day when I moved out. My mom just completely er erased my me out of that room completely. One 100%, I did not exist. I never, there's no remnants of me in that room. There's no um, mem memory of me in that room, anything at all. Except for there was a hole in the wall, a little divot that I accidentally hit something with it. That's still there. Uh, but for the most part, she just basically erased me out of that room completely. And this couch took my place. And I look at it and I loathe it. And, uh, nope. I look at it and I loathe it. And I, I, I go, well, couch, look who, look where we are now, couch. It's, it's me and you sitting in the middle of my, my dad's house. Um, and, uh, you know, my mom passed away last week and it's just me and you, couch. We are, we are going we're going to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, me and you. This couch. All right, guys. All right, well, that's enough of this couch. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys get back to what you got to do. I appreciate each and every one of you listening to us, downloading us, um, sharing us on all your social network and stuff. I, oh, God, I got to get it together. We really appreciate you guys uh, sharing us and, and linking all the stuff and being a part of us uh, through this journey that we've been going through. And we appreciate all your, uh, everyone reaching out to us. Uh, we really do. It, me it means a lot. You know, when people say hearts and prayers, uh, you know, you just kind of take it like a, you know, great assault. You know, you're just saying that, saying that. But a lot of people, when they say it, we, we really do appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys get back to what you got to do. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, sorry about short and sweet, but, um, uh, I got a lot of stuff going on. I right now got to go box up the rest of the, the kitchen dishes. Cause I think they're pretty stagnant right now. They're not really selling. Uh, so we're going to box those up and, and get ahead of the game here. All right, guys. Uh, All right, guys. Thanks a lot for listening to us, downloading us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Wait, wait, wait. Come back. This is the end. The absolute end. Écoute-moi. Bye.